You previously saw how to make a line of code, or indeed a block of code, execute repeatedly using a for next loop, like this one here. I'm using a variable which I've named x to count my way through the loop. Let's just remind ourselves what it does. Personally, I tend to avoid using letters of the alphabet for variable names. I like the names to be a little bit more meaningful. So I'm going to rename x to something a little more appropriate. I've called it I count instead. I because it's an integer and count because that's what it's for. It's to count my way through the loop. In this video, I want to show you an alternative way to make a line of code or a block of code execute repeatedly. I'm going to show you something called the do while loop. I'm referring to it as the do while loop because most people do, but as you'll see in a moment, it comes in a number of different forms. Here's one of them. Now you might be tempted to give this a try as it stands. I strongly recommend that whenever you're writing code that contains looping constructs, you should always save your code first. Watch what happens when I run this. Hello zero, hello zero. This will go on forever, just saying hello zero. Let's see if we can work out why. I need to stop the program. Fortunately, I can still see this red square here. So that will force the execution to stop. I've said that I want the loop to repeat while the value of I count is less than or equal to five. Immediately after you've declared a numeric variable, it will contain zero. So by the time we get to this line of code, I count contains the value zero, which of course is less than or equal to five. So we output hello zero. When the loop repeats, I count is still zero. Its value hasn't changed. So we output the message again. And then the loop repeats again and again and again. It's called an infinite loop. It will go on forever. Because I'm using a do while loop, I need to make sure that I write some code to increment the value of I count. I'm going to increment the value of I count before I do the output, like this. So all this line of code says is take the value of I count, add one to it, and then put the result back into I count, overwriting what's already there. In other words, add one to I count. So at the top of the loop, we check if the value of I count is less than or equal to five, which first time around it is, it's equal to zero. Then we increment it. So now I count has the value one. Then we do the output, hello one. We go back to the top of the loop. And because I count is still less than or equal to five, we get back into the loop code and we add one to it. I count now has a value of two. So we can output hello two. And around and around we go until such time as I count is no longer less than or equal to five. We've met the so-called exit condition of the loop. So we can exit the loop and the program will continue down here. Let's just put a line of code in here just to prove that the program has dropped out of the loop. Now let's give it a go. Hello one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll have to look at that and think about why that's happening. And then all done. I only wanted to count up to five, but it actually counted up to six. And that has to do with the exit condition of my loop. I said I want to loop while I count is less than or equal to five, which means my loop will continue if I count is equal to five. When I count is equal to five, I add one to it, so it becomes six, and I do another output. All I need to change is that exit condition. 
do while I count is less than 5. That's better. You need to be mindful of the contents of the variable which you are using to count your way through the loop. Now you might be wondering why do we bother with do while loops when we have for next loops? I've had to write more code to get the same effect. Well, the answer to that question is that the do while loop is more flexible. For example, I can say do until I count is equal to 5. Strictly speaking, this is not a do while loop, this is a do until loop. Watch what happens when I run it. Exactly the same effect. But it means that I can build an alternative exit condition for a loop. And as you'll see later, sometimes it's more appropriate to use do until rather than do while. I can also do this. I'm just going to move this piece of code. So I'm saying do this block of code and loop until I count is equal to 5. Let's take a look. Exactly the same effect, but sometimes it's appropriate to put the exit condition at the bottom of the loop. This means that the code inside the loop will execute at least once. If the exit condition is at the top of the loop, it might not execute at all. If, for example, something has set the value of I count to be equal to 5 before we go into the loop, like this, then the code inside the loop won't execute at all. We've already met the exit condition. And there's one more form of the do while loop, if I may call it that, which I'd like to show you. Loop while I count is less than 5. Does the same thing. Let's look at those four variations next to each other so we can compare them. Four loops that do exactly the same thing. Now we need to be careful here. I need to reinitialize the value of I count in between each of these loops. It starts off here with a value of 0, but by the time we've dropped out of the first loop, it will have a value of 5. As I said, you need to be mindful of the value inside the variable which you are using to count your way through the loop. For good practice, I'm going to explicitly initialize it here as well. Although I know in this particular program it will have a value of 0 at that point. So there you have it. Four different variations of the do while loop, or the do until loop if you'd rather call it that.